Okay. I've actually had this video done for a while. Um, and I had problems recording it. Uh, the commentary. So, let's get started. This is continuation. This is part two of the Javier Pena Interloper playthrough. We're going to load up the game. And I'm going to show you where I'm at. Here's our interlopers. They're all interlopers. Javier Pena is our current game. He's 292 days in. He's at Timberwolf. Well, my last video, we stopped at around 175 days. So we've got progress from 175 to 291. Um, let's drink and fast forward to the morning. I'll show you around the house. We'll go look at the journal. Um, actually, let's just put our lantern on and we'll walk around. So, you know, what I, I base up every map. Here's our Timberwolf base. Um, as it stands, day 291. Uh, you can see we're, we're set here. Um, we got a lot of extra supplies at our Timberwolf base. And you can see, you know, I'm not hurting for anything almost 300 days in. And we're all the way up on Timberwolf, too. This is how I do things. Uh, we stock up. Now, when I, my last video, through 175 days, we hadn't mapped anything. So that's why I came up to Timberwolf. We, we mapped everything. Here's the summit. Um, obviously, there's a couple little dark, dark spots to get. Here's, we'll quickly go through. The rest of the maps, uh, we've done some mountain town. Hushed River Valley, I spent 16 days there. I've never been there before, so I've only got 16 days in Hushed River Valley, and this is what we did. We made our way around these outskirt caves. We'll have to go back there. Desolation Point, we've gotten most of everything. Crumbling Highway, same. Coastal Highway, we've made uh, some progress. There's the ravine, Mystery Lake, I think that's about it. Muskeg, Winding River, no. Pleasant Valley, not really. We haven't been to Broken Railroad. So let's look at the journal. You can see we're skilled up except for ice fishing and mending. It's possible there's another rifle book somewhere in Mountain Town. Uh, we haven't we started to look for the the these cairns and I haven't started looking for these buffer memories yet So we're 292 days in and you can see 85% of the world interloper is the most I've ever explored when I go to mountain town That'll probably get up to 100% and I haven't unlocked faithful cartographer yet, so Probably gonna go for that one to try to get it on interloper Let's look through here. You can kind of see, I'm trying to spend 75 days in each location this playthrough. We're getting close. See, there's the 16 days in Mountain Town and another 16 in Hush River Valley. So I just made a pit stop there to check those places out. 230 out of 261 bow hits. We're crushing that. You can see we've got seven wolf struggles, which. It's kind of a, you know, you want to have as few as possible. It's kind of a lot. We'll see a couple of them in the video where I made mistakes in the highlights. You can see those distress pistol hits. Three out of seven. It's actually seven out of seven, but when you shoot it into a moose, for some reason, it doesn't count as a hit. Um, you can see we've killed 22 bears. We're all over the bears. But we've only gotten two moose, and I've only seen, I think, two or three. I feel like I've seen three in 300 days. Uh, that's about it. Um, we did get parasites once because we ate a piece of meat accidentally, raw. They've now changed that where you have to, like, double click, you know, in order to do that. So they made an extra click, so you don't do that accidentally, which is a good thing. The other thing that's different about this video is we are uh, 
um, they changed the cooking times. They made the cooking times a little bit less for everything. So we'll actually be, be easier to survive um, with the cooking times. So that's a, that's a synopsis of where we are now. Let's exit out of here. And we'll load up the highlights. Okay. So like I said, <clears throat> I uh, spent some time in Hush River Valley, and I just wanted to kind of like, this video is I'm just walking around, I'm exploring a little around this one cave, um, it kind of gives an idea of like when I explore, I try to do the mapping, look for good spots to map, so I can get orientation of the map, and then um, I always walk around with my flare gun out, too heavy, and that comes in handy in an interloper. Because if you get surprised when you're going up these little ridges, you can always pop a shot off. If you don't have it out, it takes too long to pull it out and cock it. It won't really help you. Um, so this isn't like a real interesting highlight. It's just if you haven't been to Hush River Valley, it's a huge area. Um, there's a lot of caves. And on Interloper, there's a ton of loot. The best loot in the whole game, probably, all on one map. There's guaranteed combat pants on this map. Uh, there's a hammer, hacksaw, bedroll. Um, I'm not sure if there's a lantern out here, too. There might be. Um, There's a lot of, uh, there's a good number of saplings, and a lot of the, a lot of, uh, edibles, consumables. So if you're going for a really long interloper run, it's a place that's worth coming out to. Similar to Timberwolf, it's worth summiting Timberwolf as early as you can for that great clothing loot and for the flare gun shells and all over. So I was going to go, the reason I put this in there too is I'm going to go in this cave and there's a, uh, one of the loot piles just so you can get a feel for how much loot there is in, uh, Hush River Valley. And there is a cave out here that can have a wolf. I don't think that I'm in that one. Ultimately, when you're in Hush River Valley, there's just uh, there's not you don't have a renewable supply of scrap or cloth because there's no buildings and you don't um, really have a way to replenish or make oil because there's no fishing out there so those are things you got to think about if you're gonna come live out here for a long period of time like more than 50 or 100 days So you can kind of see if you spawn in Hush River Valley, this would be a good cave to stop into early game because of Excellent. all this loot. Just what I need. You're usually not going to find something like the hacksaw and the bedroll in the same location. And like you know, you saw that bedroll is at four percent, two hundred. Probably like roughly 200 days in. So 
So, this is a situation where I put this fire down, and the bear kind of, I was, I was like cooking up some warm teas and stuff, and the bear kind of snuck up on me, and I couldn't get far enough away before he uh, charged me. So I had to uh, use the old flare gun on him, because I didn't want to get mauled. I didn't want to get mauled, I don't like them when they ruin my, my good hats. it's something that's rare, you know, usually I'm paying attention, but it's Hush River Valley, I'm not real familiar with the area, I don't really know where the, where the bears prowl, and that one kind of walked up on me while I was cooking, and then I sprained an ankle, I'm still just kind of like in my exploring process is why I'm looking all around. So this is something that, if you haven't seen this, it's a little trick. Uh, you can keep your fire lit up these climbing walls if you throw your torches up there and climb. And you can pick the torch up and so on and so forth. Keep a couple of them in your inventory, you can relight them. You know, it's it's a good way to move your keep your fire moving along, so you don't waste matches. If it's clear out, if it's not windy, might as well keep the fire lit, the torch. This is a weird one where I'm walking along, and all of a sudden I see the deer running at me. And I'm like, why is the deer running at me? And I noticed it's running from, I was like, oh, it's got to be a wolf or a bear. So then I saw the bear. And it was nice out, and I wasn't cold. So obviously you gotta pop a couple shots off. Trees right there. And this was another situation where I was out mapping Milton. I'm in Milton right now. And this is usually where you'll find this Milton Bear. Up at the top of the map. Uh, pretty close to the Hush River Valley entrance, actually. So we get a shot, and he's he wants to charge us. And we get into this little thing here where I don't really have a good shot. And I was also trying really hard to make sure... I didn't fall off the log because <laughs> it didn't it kept making me feel like I was going to fall off the log. See every time he got stuck and I'd move, he'd get unstuck. So you don't really like to pump them full of arrows, because if for some reason you lose them, can't find them, 
you know, um, where they run too far away, some arrows. It's just like tracking down your arrows is a real bummer. Fortunately, he died right there and we get them all back right away. I think right here I just took the hide because I wasn't going to stay, but I've been getting into a habit of where I quarter most of the deer and moose that I kill because it's efficient. You get the hide and the guts and the meat kind of for less time if you did it individually. So right here I was mapping the overlook in Mystery Lake and there's this like there's uh, the reason I put this in is sometimes there's this wolf over here that will kind of bother you if you walk far enough over this way. And I like to come up here and get rabbits and stuff. And you can see there's a rabbit down there, it's string way down there. Sometimes it can lure wolf up. You can hear him. And I didn't see him. And I don't like that. It's very dangerous in Erloper when you hear and you don't see right away. So I back off to a place where I can see. And I don't like to shoot at wolves when it's like these little ridges either. Um, but this was a this was you know just like an example of where I backed off. And then the other thing about this one is he didn't really want he didn't want to die he didn't want to bleed. I had to keep going at him um, without being too aggressive because he keeps running over that hill. So this is just one where I had to be patient. This is a great, this, this little cave up here is a great spot. There's a bunch of fur that's always up here too. So you can come up here and you can get fur. Take it back to, I usually take it back to the camp office. See, so it's round two and I think he doesn't bleed again. And sometimes when I get these these non-bleeder wolves, they tend to be the ones that want to charge you as well. So I'm like, I'm really trying to stay back from them. So right here, this is one of those things where I always go to the left of the train cars when I walk around them. And the reason is if you go to the right, sometimes you can get surprised by a wolf. So this guy, you know, he notices me right away. And uh, so we take him out. And then you notice I'll go up and I'll walk around the left. I'll start to walk around the left side again. And as I walk around the left side, see I get that view again. You can see another wolf. So what that says to me is there's two types of wolf packs in Mystery Lake. There's the three or four pack that hovers in a circle. And then there's the three pack that walks down the train tracks. And this is the three pack that walks down the train tracks. And that's why the first one was already kind of over that little ridge. Here's the second one. It's just annoying because he wants to come around that rock. And so I'm already in my head thinking, okay, there's going to be the third one. It doesn't make sense for there just to be two. So again, I'm going to go back around the left. And I see him. And there he is. You can kind of see if I had gone on the right side, I would be emerging right over that ridge about the same time as he's popping over the ridge. 
you're just gonna be re you'd be real close to him right away, and there's a chance they charge. So this one here, look at he gallops the whole way, and I'm like, oh, that's strange behavior. So I back off and I let him get the uh, decoy, and then I kill him afterwards. And that's once they've eaten a decoy, they are not interested in you really. Um, and you can usually get, if you get a good shot, you can usually take them out right after they've gotten your decoy. So the reason I was headed that direction in the first place, I was going up to the dam to get scrap and cloth. And now on my way back, I'm thinking, maybe I should take some of this wolf meat. Because it, I was warm, it was nice out. So I snagged these feathers. And you know, the farther I get into interloper game, you know, you start to get a little confident. And right here, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I've there's three wolves down right here. I tend to kill all the wolves I see on a map. So I'm thinking to myself, I should be able to get all this meat no problem without any interference. Plus, like, you know, I'm using that. It's only 27 minutes to get that meat. It's not even very long. So I, I look around. I mean, I know I smell, but I look around a little. Pull the flare gun out so that I have it equipped so I can cancel out and use it if I need to. You just try to listen for sounds while you're harvesting. And you can see I, I got the wolf right away. He, he came from all the way up um, that railroad track. And again, he wants to come around that rock. So that was, you know, there's some luck involved there in that he could have gotten there a little sooner. So right here is interesting. I uh, had just gotten to Coastal Highway. I had not been here in over 50 days, so all the wildlife has probably respawned. And I kill this deer because I need meat, and I look around. Oh, it's clear out. Nothing around. And I tell myself I'm going to harvest the whole deer. Now, you don't normally want to do that, because it takes, you know, an hour. Um, this time, I didn't have the flare gun out, I had my bow out. When I switch to the flare, I don't have enough time. So this was, I don't know, 200 and some days in, and I finally got mauled by a bear. And this guy ruined one of my good Canada hats. So... Fortunately, what I do is I don't destroy the clothing I'm not using. I put it in my bases in a drawer and I repair those items and it bumps my mending skill. Then later in the game, I can cycle through my bases and get a new hat if I have one or a scarf or a different one of the clothing items that you can't make obviously I don't repair like jeans um, or the, some of the shirts that are you know are, are worthless but like you know if you keep the headgear for situations like that repaired as you play through you'll find that you end up using that stuff and in this case I had a spare I have actually had a few spare hats on this map so I go inside and I get a spare hat but I wasn't going to let this guy get away. And I would also say, when a bear mauls you in the fog like this, it's probably the most dangerous, because you get all your stuff together, and you start to go, you know, escape. And you may not know where the bear is, you may not know which direction. I knew, I, I don't get lost in the fog, so I knew right where I was. But, um... And, you know, the other thing is, make sure you have all this stuff. You always want to have the antiseptic and the bandages on you. Otherwise, you're not playing right. So at this point, I was getting cold. So what I did was, uh, I knew that bear was going to die. So I went to the fishing hut, started up a fire, and I was going to go through all my clothing start getting myself back to normal again and have a long fire and then maybe cook up some of that bear and now I'm 
in the process of cooking some of the deer, and I can hear the bear still, you know, outside meandering around. And then you could hear him die. And it's convenient there, you know, because he's, he's right outside. So now we can go out, and like I was saying, we can, uh, we can quarter him. you have to use a knife or a hatchet. Can't use a hacksaw. And then we started cooking him. We had that fire going, a long fire. We were slick kind of staying in the net fishing hut till I uh, cooked up a lot of extra stockpiling food. You can see there's a stockpile on the ground there. And then here you can see that nearby wolf came over and so I drop a decoy and this is for me this was new AI behavior the bears and wolves will come to your meat piles your raw meat piles and they will steal some of your raw meat that you have waiting to be cooked and that's what that wolf just did you see those bear meat piles he came over and he took he didn't take the decoy I dropped. He took some from my raw meat that he smelled. He wasn't even interested in me. And that's something that I've seen a bear do it as well at Trapper's Cabin. I had all this raw meat at Trapper's and the bear came right up, ate some, and then left. But he didn't care about me and I wasn't even near the cabin. Um, so I don't know if that, to me, that's new. I've never really seen that before, that when they come for your raw meat piles like that. Um, and obviously I track this guy down and shoot him. But he came from a long way away. Um, I believe he came from the where well, you can see those wooden pillars from the log logging area. Okay, here's an example of where I make a mistake. So I put the decoy down. And I tell myself, even if he doesn't stop growling, I'm still going to shoot him. So I can tell right now he's not going for the decoy. And I tell myself, oh, I'll still be able to get the shot off. And I just released it too late. But I've been using the hatchet and I've been really mashing the A button when you slash them. Like initially, you can see he didn't even get a bite in. So that was probably, that was a really good grapple. And then he's bleeding too from the hatchet, which I like. So he's done. And he didn't really do anything to me, even though I made a pretty big mistake. And then the second one we get, you know, the conventional way. And then we're in a crumbling highway. So we know that when you're in Crumbling Highway, there's two wolves. There's never three, there's never four, and there's never one, there's two. So we've killed the two, or the, you know, they're good, they're done. So now we can focus on doing the beach combing and then moving on to Desolation Point, where I think I was to going to make some more arrowheads. The other thing about this crumbling highway and desolation point is you want to go through their crumbling highway and desolation point you want to get the beach combing and you want to get the coal late game be clearing those things so that they replenish for you 
it's kind of like uh, it's just something that you do late after you've been 200 plus days in you might be running out of saplings or something this is just one where I'm always kind of experimenting to see like how close you can get when they're doing that and the answer is that's how close till they turn around can't move in very much farther once they turn around And then we're getting close to the end here. This is just an example of if you don't have a decoy and it's late game and you're at level five archery, you can still get the wolves to direct towards you and then sneak and shoot at them before they recognize that you're there. It's called shoot first bow technique. That's what happened. And then I always show this as well for people who aren't aware. This is an easy one. I wouldn't have had to take my clothes off to get this one. But if you take your clothes off, you can let your sprint meter build up. And then you can run out, pick up these beach combing, and you can kind of see what I do is I take my clothes off that slow me down. And I keep my bow and arrow out so that that reticle, the targeting reticle is, you know, on the item. And then I go clear all the beach combing items. And these ones aren't very far, these little examples. So the easy ones you want to be getting all the time. Some of the harder ones you may skip. Um, it's up to you. There's one more I think I'm gonna go get here. And you just snag your clothing. But if you do fall in, you know, you're gonna get hypothermia, but your clothes won't be wet. And they, I think when you fall in, they lose somewhere between like three and 5% right away. So when you're going for a really long interloper run, you don't want your clothes getting wrecked when you uh, beach comb. This one's a little farther away. It's a long run, so I'm waiting for my stamina bar to build up. You can see it just filled up there. And then you run all the way out. And then you run back. If I can drop any of this gear. So what are we doing here? We're cooking up. I think it was I was stockpiling lamp oil at that point. I think this is just another example of a shoot first technique. You always want to be, if you've decided that you're going to stay somewhere, a coastal highway, mystery lake, you want to be clearing all the wolves pretty much all the time. The more you do that, the longer you're going to live in interloper. Um, you won't get surprised when you're harvesting something. If you're, if you, if you, if you're a pacifist and you leave the wolves alive, you're going to have a lot more difficult. So the game is going to be much harder to stay alive long term. So especially in a map like Coastal Highway, I'm clearing the wolves every, let's say, seven to ten days you make a pass. And, it, you know, it might take 20 days for some of the wolves to respawn, but... Most of them, it takes a while, so it's a it's a it's a good practice, especially you know that one near your fishing hut. I don't make my when I'm in Coastal Highway. I always make my base at the that little fishing camp over by the fishing hut. I never use uh, Misanthrope or Jackrabbit. They're too out of the way. And when I'm on Mystery Lake, I always use Camp Office. It's my base building. I 
You can see the other reason what I did right there is I took all my clothes off because I was in the fishing hut fishing. You can see I went and I almost got frostbite. 99% because <laughs> I didn't have my clothes on. So I was out there killing that wolf without and doing that wood without any of my clothes on. Yeah, pretty stupid. So this is kind of like an example of how you can make mistakes in the late game that can really... Luckily I get, you know, no, there was nothing negative, but that could have been horrible. That could have been like a 20% condition gone forever. So you saw this video, you know, I'm still alive after 291 days, but I have made a bunch of mistakes. The idea is, you know, have those mistakes be mitigated by good, strong gameplay and otherwise sound decision making. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope this helped uh, with some more tips. And I'm sorry I haven't made a lot more videos lately, but this game updates in December. And I'm going to be streaming it when it updates story mode. So I'll see you guys all then. Bye.